we went from on Monday uh, calling it mediocre care, this idea of Medicare for all, to on Friday calling it nowhere care uh, and borrowing a phrase from uh, Alex Azar, the uh, Secretary of Department of Health and Human Services, who basically said that if, if they go to Medicare for all, it's not going to be Medicare for all. It's going to be Medicare for nobody. Uh, and, and, you know, what we really emphasized on Monday was two things that seem to get lost in this debate. And it's, and it's, I think, indicative of a lot of debates we have where the debate is over a small change in a certain direction. But the people advocating that small change that clearly won't make, uh, you know, the, uh, a gigantic difference, argue that it's going to make all the difference and that it's the same. Uh, I think about the gun issue where oftentimes uh, we need to add, you know, uh, the, we close the, the um, gun show loophole. And the result is almost as if you obliterated all guns on the face of the earth. You know, it's, it's somehow that will solve all the problem. And, and they don't come out and say that, but it is, it's argued over as if you oppose that particular, particular loophole, you're saying you don't care if people are killed all the time by guns, as if to do that, there's not ever going to be anybody killed by guns. There'll never be anyone who breaks the law or does anything bad. And, and uses a gun to do it. And it's the, the, the same way here, I think, in the sense that Medicare for all is everyone gets full coverage, no one has to pay anything, everything's covered, everyone's saved, cancer is obliterated, everything's perfect on a, on a medical system. And, and of course we know it can't be perfect, but you would never be denied anything ever again in medicine. And of course, that's not how Medicare works, um, you know, my folks, I know my in-laws, they are part of the one-third of people on Medicare who buy supplemental insurance. And I think the reason they do that is that they're very much convinced that if they didn't buy the supplemental insurance, that they would have a hard time using their Medicare coverage because they'd have to, you know, they've got to pay out. They've got their share. Um, and, and so, you know, the, if we go to Medicare for all, it means that a lot of people are going to want further insurance. It's not the government coming in and taking over everything. The other thing that doesn't get pointed out is how often med people don't take Medicare and that you will create a, a further two-tier system where some people are able to have the added insurance and they're able maybe to go find their own practitioner who who wouldn't take the medicare and uh and other people aren't and so it's you know it it i'm not you know i'm not a big fan of of the system we have now uh, i heard someone the other day on tv suggest that maybe the thing to do is figure out what works in this system and protect it and figure out what doesn't work and fix it but to start from this system which you know almost everybody hates the system, but it makes, makes some logical sense that you would start somewhere as opposed to this kind of pie in the sky, hey, we're going to solve everything. The government just comes in and pays for everything. And the idea that you would throw all these people who have insurance out, it's the kind of, it's, it's not a thoughtful uh, proposal. And it does basically say that the government can just kind of change the whole medical system at the drop of a hat. And that's not, that, that's not the way change usually works in the world. Now, sometimes there are quick changes, but those quick changes aren't by fiat. They aren't because someone passed a law and says, okay, now we're going to completely, you know, it, it's, it's like the Green New Deal. We're going to pass a law that we're going to revolutionize all of society. And we're going to create all these new jobs, even though we're losing all these old jobs. I mean, people should be absolutely scared to death to think that government thinks it can do that much without, you know, without a whole lot of explanation about the costs. And of course, that was the main thing we were pointing out is that, to his credit, Bernie Sanders, even though I don't think he's fully addressed the full cost of Medicare for all uh, or the limits 
to what that actually would be, uh, which is, of course, you know, what we were pointing out on Monday. But Elizabeth Warren continues to pretend that the middle class isn't going to pay. And that's, you know, that, that's the whole idea. It, it's one thing, and it seems to me to be just fundamentally morally bankrupt to suggest to middle class people, and I am a middle class person, and as I know you, you are a middle class person. You know, so often on TV, someone in some debate is talking about middle class people who you don't know if they've ever met one. But, but you know, these, this idea that it's okay for us to grab all kinds of good things for us and just take it from somebody who's rich, or just take it from a big corporation as if, if you're a big corporation, you're, you're obviously evil and it's all right for everyone to, to steal from you. That's wrong, but of course it's fantasy too, because we know that, uh, you know, that it, there's just not enough money in wealthy hands to be able to do everything that's needed for the millions of people who are middle class or lower middle class or lower class or middle, upper middle, you know, or whatever. And uh, it reminds me actually of my daughter, my oldest, who's older now, but when she was, when Bill Clinton was president, I guess she was maybe eight or something. And, um, and she said something about, well, is Bill Clinton's tax increases going to be really that bad because it, it's only hitting rich people, right? And, uh, and I explained to her that, um, you know, rich people, we, it's not okay to hit them. It's not okay to just take from them because they earn more money and so on. And I went through this whole long thing. And then, of course, at the end, I said, and by the way, Jessica, Bill Clinton thinks we're rich, <laughs> which is, of course, the, you know, the middle class is going to pay for this. So it's almost like, um, hey, we're going to take your money and give you something you'll really like. Well, we have a marketplace for that. And it works a lot better because we have the choice to say, you know what? No, thank you. And that's the problem in politics. They, they just don't take no thank you uh, as well as they should. Mm -hmm.